So in a couple previous pages, we've had a picture that we've kind of been flirting with, which is the picture of the quartiles in this kind of box with little lines on the either side of it. It's called a box and whisker plot. And so that's technically section 3.5 is box and whisker plots, but they're so useful for showing the picture of what quartiles and percentiles look like that I have them earlier. So this is technically section 3.5 box plots. Also known as box and whisker plots. I think for obvious reasons, because it has a box with some whiskers on it. Oh, and before I go any further, I actually need to switch the pagers. Okay, so <laughs> confession time. When I first made these videos, I made them with more with a TI-84 than StatCrunch, and also with a different program to make the graphs. It's not important. It's called Minitab. But Minitab aligns pretty well with the T84. So this box plot is the box plot of the data we just looked at. However, I'm going to change this in next semesters to this box plot. <laughs> so this is the one from StatCrunch. I'm going to show you how to find it. So if you're watching this in spring of 2023, I'm actually going to put the link to this page, this just this page, in the description for this video. Um, here, I'm just going to rewrite that. Box and whisker plots, aka box plots, right? This is section um, 3.5 officially. Technically, the five number summary was in there also, but I don't know why because it's really a 3.4 thing. Anyway, so I'm going to change this graph for all future iterations of this course pack. So if you're watching with the old iteration, the old graph, it's fine. You can probably just kind of write it the way you need to. But if you want this new version, I'll put the link to just this page in the description so that you could print out just this page if you wanted to. Because the box plot does change when you're using StatCrunch versus Minitab, which was the program I was using earlier. It's not a big deal. Um, it's based in that comment that I made a previous video about, which is that different uh, Computers, different calculators calculate Q1 and Q3 differently. Therefore, IQR is calculated differently. Therefore, the outliers are different. So it's kind of a domino effect, right? Because the quartiles are different, then everything else is different. Not a big deal. It's just the way that certain software works. Okay, so what is a box plot or a box and whisker plot? It's a graphical display of the five number summary. The five number summary being what we just saw, the min, Q1, the median, Q3, and the max. Those are five numbers that summarize a data set. Oh, it's written right there as well. <laughs> okay, so min, Q1, median, which is also known as Q3, or Q2, sorry. So the median, some students forget sometimes that that's Q2, right, but it is. All right, the median goes in the center line of the box. Q1 to Q3 is the length of the box, right? The IQR is that length. The range is from the min all the way up to the max, and any outliers are denoted with symbols, okay? Um, they're really great representations of data. They're better than histograms in many respects. They show outliers very cleanly and neatly. Um, they show the spread. They show the highest value, the lowest value. They've, they're really excellent. I particularly like them. Okay, so let's label this one so we can understand what we're seeing. So over here is the minimum, right? So that's the lowest value in our data set. Over here is the maximum. That's the highest value. Now, Q1 is the left edge of the box, right? So Q1, it rows it right here. It's the lower edge of the box. So this is Q1 right here. This line right here is Q2, which is the median. And this is Q3. Now, you'll notice they're not all equally spaced. That's not what this is a graph of. But they do all have equal percentages. That's what's key. 25% of your data fall here between that minimum and that Q1, right? Because Q1 is the 25th percentile, right? So this is P25. So of course, 25% are at or below that value. 
then another 25%, I don't know how well this is going to show up, this is blue ink here, yeah, 25% is in here, another 25% is in here, and another 25% is over here. Is right there. All right, so each of those sections, this left whisker has 25%, this left box has 25%, the right box has 25%, and the right whisker also has 25%. Hence, it's often called a box and whisker plot. Now, we know these values because we calculated them already. We found them in a previous example. I can flip back a couple pages to find them. The median was 84, Q1 was 77, Q3 was 88. So this was 77, this was 84, this was 88, this was 93, and over here was 54. That was the lowest data point. And you can tell what they are just by looking, right? That's falling at about 77. That number's falling at 84. There's a number line down here to help you make those connections. That's 93. That line right there is 88. And then way over here is 54, from that dot all the way down. Right? So the number line is given on the x-axis in order to help you calculate scores. I mean, if you didn't know these values ahead of time, though, you'd just kind of eyeball them. you just kind of guess. <laughs> You'd be like, I think that looks about 77. You know, as long as you're close, your professor will give you credit. Okay, so we labeled the five number summary on the plot. Lovely. What proportion of the scores lie between? All right, I'm going to have to change these for for future. So I'm going to change these right now. Um, again, because when I did this, I was originally doing this with a TI calculator. So we're going to change these values right now on the fly, and then next semester all they will be correct. So I think I was going for between Q1, which is 77, and Q3, which is 88. Well, between 77 and 88 would be 50%, right? Because there's 25% here and 25% here. What proportion of scores lie above, and again, that's going to be, these are old values, so I'm going to change that to a 77. Those were values that came from the TI calculator. So all the 76s are changing to 77. There we go. Okay, so that's a 77, this is 77 right there. So above 77 would be 25, 25, and 25, which makes 75% in total. What about below 88? Well, 88's right here, so below it would be 25, 25, and 25. This whole thing is the whisker. The whisker's not just the line, it's the line and the dots. They all count. So that's 75%. What proportion of the scores lie between 54 and 77? Okay, 54 is here, it's the min. 77 is right here, it's the Q1. That's Q1. 25% are there. Because that's what the quartile is. All right, so to what number does the left line extend? Explain. All right. Well, let's look at it. <laughs> so the left line is this bit right here. So what number is that going to? And the answer is it's going to 70. So now why 70? What is going on? It's points. Okay. okay, well, if we look back at our data set, we can see that we have a 54, a 56, a 60, and then a 70, 70, and so on. So the reason it's going to 70 is because that's a number that's in the data set that is not an outlier. These three were determined to be outliers using our method right here. So we said 54, 56, and 60 are all outliers. Therefore, that line goes to the next number that's in the data set that's not an outlier. So it's the lowest number in the data set that is not an outlier, right? 60 is an outlier, therefore it, all, it doesn't go all the way to 60. It goes to 70 because that's the next number in the data set that is an outlier. 
Now let's tag on to this a little bit. We can also tell something else from these box plots. Another reason why they're so great, they really are. Five number summaries are fabulous, <laughs> and a box plot is just a visual representation of the five number summary. The lowest number, the Q1, the Q2, the Q3, the max. But in looking at this, I can also tell something else. Just by looking at this, I can tell that it's skewed left. So I will mention also up here that a box plot gives us these things, but I'm going to make a note over here. So let's note. Not only does a box plot tell us outliers and range, but a box plot also reveal the shape of a distribution, whether it's skewed left or skewed right or symmetric. As a matter of fact, let's answer that question down here for letter G. Let's, let's make up a letter G down here. What is the shape of this distribution and why? I will type that up and add it in for future. <laughs> okay, so the answer is that it's skewed left. It has a long tail, a long whisker on the left, much longer on the left than it is on the right. And actually, I can also see that the box on the left is bigger than the box on the right. So I'm going to say skewed left because the whisker on the left is much longer. than the right. I also want you to remember and note that that whisker includes the dots. Oops, includes the outlier dots. They're part of it, right? So of course it's skewed left. It has low outliers. <laughs> if it has outliers on the left, it's going to be skewed left. And the box plot shows us that with its lovely picture. 